Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas yesterday. I don't know whether you're able to spend it with family or friends, whether you're by yourself. But wherever you were, I hope you felt the warmth and love of Christ at this Christmas season. Today, we don't have a service in our church. Instead, we just got this little thought for us to think about. Maybe we're having a, a late brunch with our family. Maybe we're just reflecting on this time. Whatever it is, it's an opportunity for us to reflect on this season of Christmas and all that it brings to us. Did you have an Advent calendar this year? Well, I know we did a kind of reverse Advent calendar as we were trying to collect for the local food bank. And we'll still do that. We're going to pick up those packages in the, in the new year to donate to them. So if you have some or you want to get on board, there's still time. But I'm thinking about real Advent calendars now. I'm thinking about pulling back the windows and seeing a different scene each day. Or maybe you just had chocolate. Well, I, I hope at some point anyway in your life, you've had an Advent calendar with pictures. And that's the beauty of an Advent calendar. There are 24 windows, and each one has a different picture. But the pictures are all about Christmas. They're all about the Advent season. Christmas itself is a little bit like that Advent calendar. As we open a window, we get a different view, a different glimpse of what Christmas is all about. This is a wonderful story, the story we read every year, the story we tell ourselves. And yet, as we look at it, there are so many different facets, so many different wonderful things in it. And so today, I would just like, I would just like us to think about it and contemplate and ask ourselves, what picture of Christmas have I seen this year that's meant something to me? And maybe if you're with your family or your friends, maybe share with them, ask each other. But to get you started, here are a few ideas. The angel declares peace on earth. Maybe the idea of peace is something that we need to cling on to. This year has had ups and downs. There's been conflict, there's been fights. There's war going on in different places. But maybe this year we need to hear the message of peace. Open another window. Maybe we see the window of the angels singing and praising God for this wonderful thing they're seeing. And maybe in your life, you feel as if that is where you are this Christmas. You just want to sing and praise and give witness to the wonderful things that you've seen God do in your life and in the world. Maybe you've pulled back the window and the idea of a baby in a manger reminds you of new life. Maybe you've experienced that in your life this year with a child, a grandchild, a nephew or niece, and maybe, through the experience of your family this year, you're gaining a new understanding of what it meant for God to become human. Maybe you're pulling the window back and you're seeing the wise men coming from the East. These are people who had no Jewish, no Christian background. They were pagans. They were, they were magicians, as it were, astrologers. They, they were looking at the stars. And yet God reached out to them and brought them to his son and they worshipped him. So maybe this year, your window on a Christmas is a God who breaks down those barriers, who reaches out to people who don't even know him or anything about him or even looking for him and shows him his wonderful goodness. Maybe... This year, as you pull back the window, you hear about the glad tidings 
of comfort and joy. And maybe in your life you need a bit of comfort and joy. Maybe you need the reassurance that there is a God of hope. Maybe this year you've pulled back the window and it's the prophet saying, God has promised to come. And we see in our nativity, God keeping his promise. Maybe the faithfulness of God is something that you see this year in the Christmas story. There are so many more windows onto this story. There's a story of the family uh, of, of Mary and Joseph and, and the little baby who have to flee uh, to a foreign country, be refugees. There's a story of the terrible things that Herod does. There's, there's some, you know, it, there are some nasty bits in that story. And maybe in, reflect, maybe in some of our lives, that's what we're experiencing. But then some wonderful things too. There's the hospitality of the innkeeper. There's the shepherds and nature who comes and recognizes who God is. There's the idea of peace. There's the idea of God keeping his promise. There's the idea of the angels worshiping with us. There are so many things in this story. And at the heart of it, there's a God who keeps his promises, a God who comes to save us. So this morning, or maybe if you had a you had a very busy Christmas yesterday with your family and friends, maybe this afternoon. Reflect on the Christmas story. Ask yourself, what's the most important thing for me this year in this story? And share it with the person you're with. And then let them tell you what the most important thing for them is. And then together, Maybe sing a carol, read the gospel account of Jesus' birth, give thanks to God, say a prayer for each other, thanking him for his wonderful gift this Christmas. And then pause and take a break from all the busyness, from all the madness, and spend this Sabbath with your God. May you truly experience the God who came into this world. May you truly experience the God who became our salvation. May you truly experience the God who is coming again soon. Lord of all, thank you for the message of Christmas so familiar and so well loved, yet able to surprise us with joy and to make us catch our breath in wonder. As we reflect on the image of Christmas that means mu so much to us this year, may we be drawn closer to you and into a deeper relationship with you and our family and friends. Amen.